Hi, I'm Nick Speed and you've joined me today at Hawcroft Fisheries where we're going to run through a few guidelines on how to get the best out of meat. So we're going to do a bit of preparation, I'm going to show you how to use the bait, feed the bait what, and what rigs we're going to use as well depending on where we're going to fish in our swim, i.e. shallow and on the deck. So this, all this information should give you, give you a better insight on how to get the best, best out of the meat. As we all know, size matters and especially with the meat. I simplify my options really, I stick to two sizes, 6mm and 8mm. Now they're the two most common sizes you'll find anglers will use. Now 6mm catches everything, small carp, big carp, every, virtually every species, skimmers, roach, very good uniform size. However 8mm obviously is a bit more of a target bait more selective, you, you're targeting the better fish feeding in your peg and there's times when you use either side and this is what we're going to cover today when to use different sizes. Today we're at Hawcroft Fisheries and I'm using 6mm meat and how you prepare especially 6mm size cubes is very very important. What we've got to remember is that meat, luncheon meat, is, is a large percentage of fat and as we all know fat floats so if we don't prepare this meat properly you'll find a large percentage of even a tin of meat you're not getting the most of it it's actually becoming a neutral you, you, and what I mean by that is it's becoming neutrally buoyant a lot of your peg, bait is floating out of your peg so how I wash my bait off and how I prepare it is the most important part to my bait preparation so as you can see here I've got two tubs and I've diced them up on the bank side and I've put it into water however this meat here I've diced it up at home and I've frozen it down and you can see straight away the difference that that this and this is a problem a lot of, a lot of anglers have is they don't like using the meat because they get fatty hands it gets all over the clothes all over the you know all over the pole everywhere and it rots things it rots elastic However, this frozen meat, as you can see, the water is virtually clear. And what I've found over the years of experimenting with this bait is that feeding a frozen meat, or like what I used to an awful lot, and I still do now, is I will prepare my bait at home and wash it off in warm water. And what's happening is you're removing a large percentage of that fat. This is very important, which means that your bait is falling at a uniformed rate. However, if you do it on the bank side, let's say here, you can even see there's some pieces floating on the surface. If I waft them up, I've still got pieces floating on the surface. And this is going to invite wildlife such as seagulls into your swim. And if you're trying to catch shallow, you're not improving your, you're not, you know, you're decreasing your results and scaring fish if you've got seagulls trying to get at the floating particles moving out of your swim. So by Preparing your bait correctly is very important. So always try to prepare your bait at home. And as I've said, if you've got any bait left, you can freeze it down. And this is what I do. I always make sure I bring some frozen meat with me, which ensures that I'm feeding it and I know it's sinking and it's all getting down to the bottom or a larger percentage of it's getting to the bottom. So six mil meat is very important how you wash it off. However, with eight mil meat, because it's a larger cube, you'll find it's obviously it's denser because it's a bigger piece of meat you don't have to wash the bait off you can actually cut that up on the bank side leave it in water and it'll all sink now as a general rule plum rose the most consistent source of meat i use is plum rose simply because it does hold quite a low fat content you'll find a lot of the products on the shelves nowadays there's too much fat in it and this is the problem where you'll get your your meat floating and especially i hear a lot of anglers with this problem where they'll cut the meat off cut the meat up not use it they'll freeze it down and, and they'll say that it's floating i personally i've never had that problem because i use plum rose and i think if you stick to plum rose you're on the right guideline so that's meat preparation six or eight eight mil cubes right let's talk about the rigs now now i try to keep my rigs quite simple but logic at the same time now let's forget this this one i've got from a long pole line which is i'm catching today that's my short line which i've just set up but it's not working today as a general rule i will set up four rigs form a long pole line and today we're at hawcroft we're on the reed pool it's seven foot deep 
water's quite deep. Now, what the problem is, what you have on commercials with deep waters, let's say seven foot, is you end up with water columns. And water columns hold different temperatures of water. So as we all know, top weights on commercials are caught in shallow water. So if you've got open water in front of you like what we have today, then you, you end up catching, if you are gonna catch a weight of fish, you're gonna catch them on the shallow, shallow on the pole. Especially when it's warmer weather, which means it's higher pressure. And the higher the pressure means the warmer the water is higher up. This is why fish want to feed at this particular depth, because of the warmth of the water, not because of the amount of oxygen in it. So what you find is you need to cover your options. So today I've got a full deck rig to fish on the bottom, because as we all know, air pressure can change all the time. And if all of a sudden we get cloudy, windy, uh, you know, from a, a nice warm day, sunshine into an overcast windy day, that water column is what we call a thermocline is lowered down and it gives the fish confidence to actually move further down the water column and feed nearer the bottom. So this is where a deck rig, you must always put a deck rig up. Obviously if it's high pressure there's less chance of it working but if it's low pressure you'll catch an awful lot of fish and this is why just having these rigs up means if it changes all of a sudden, pick your rig up and give it a try because it can all of a sudden change your swim and what fish you're catching. So from a deck rig, I'm using a 4x14 float. This is a Malman Speedy. Um, and for main line, I'm using Shimano Aspire Silk Shot 016. And let's just go down to the hook length. And now I like to use an eight inch hook length. Uh, and it's an 014 again, Shimano Aspire Silk Shot, 014 up length, but it's eight inches long. And the reason for that is, and I've done this for a long time now, um, it allows me to put a shot on my hook length. So rather than having different length hook lengths in my box, I just use one particular length, especially for this depth. So if I'm missing bites, I, all I have to do is, as you can see, just move that dropper and I can then turn it from an eight inch hook length to a six inch or four inch. I can be versatile with my shotting pattern and that's very important, especially in the deeper water. So the shotting pattern, I'm using just number tens. So this, this particular float, the 4 by 14 Malman Speedy, it takes 10, nine, uh, 11 number tens. And as you can see here, I've got a bulk and two droppers, and today that seems to be the pattern that seems to be working the best. If all of a sudden I start missing bites, then by just using number 10s, allows me to be versatile with my shotting pattern. I can move my bulk down, tighten it up, which means I'm delivering my hook bait quicker down to the bottom. Or if, especially when it's cold and I'm not getting that many bites or I'm missing bites, I can spread my bulk, which means I'm not slowing the fall of the bait down, I'm dispersing the weight of the float, which is giving the fish confidence to take your hook bait more confidently, which means better bites and, and less missed bites as well. So that's the deck rig. The only thing I've not said about the deck rig is, especially on open water venues like what we are on today, above the float I've got two number eight back shot, and this is really important. I'm fishing a reasonably long lash because it's really windy out there. My pole's waving about and I don't want to hit my float. Every time I hit my float, I'm making my hook bait look unnatural. By using two number eights back shot, virtually halfway between the pole tip and the float, I'm cancelling out me hitting that float and instead I'm hitting the back shot, which means you're creating better bait presentation. And if you're creating better bait presentation, you're going to get more bites and catch more fish. So that's the deck rig. Now, for my shallow rigs, I have staggered rigs. Now, you find a lot of people, they'll just set one shallow rig up and they'll try it and they'll think, oh, it's not working. And what you've got to remember is fish aren't necessarily at a particular depth. And this is why I've got three rigs up. These are all carper chimps. And as you can see, I've got them staggered only slightly. And the difference is unbelievable sometimes. You know, I've had it today. I've been catching a few fish. And I start on that float, not a bite. And now most, this is where most of them think, oh, well, they're not shallow. I've then picked that rig up, which is only four or five inches deeper, and it's gone straight under and I've caught a carp. And it's because it's making that last little bit of your bait fall slightly differently. So as it's, as it, let's say with this bait here, the carper 
a little bit deeper, they're looking at a static bait. But actually by putting a deeper rig out, you're creating a fall in front of the noses and then it's forcing them to grab it. So that's very important. Cover your options when shallow fishing. Who are we to say that we're gonna catch at a set depth? So by having three different depths up, you can really find out what depth the feeding of fish are feeding at. So three rigs, four by 12 chimps. Again, 016 Shimano Silk Shot Aspire to 014 up length. And on all my rigs, I'm using a Preston 434 16 up, which I think for six mil meat, fantastic up. Really strong, just the right shape as well. Now, from a presentation wise, my rig consists of just the bulk for drop fishing, uh, for shallow fishing. And generally, maybe two thirds of the way down the rig, as you can see here. And what's this doing is it's, it's drop, it's, um, putting the float in, making the float register, but you're still creating a natural fall with your hook bait. I don't want a bulk too near my hook. Maybe if I started missing bites, then that's when I'd bring my bulk further down to deliver my hook bait to the correct area where I know the fish are feeding at. So that's it, quite simple. All my rigs, bulk generally two thirds of the way down the, the rig, uh, you know, to deliver the hook bait down, just to create, still create a natural fall as well. Now, also, my elastics, they're the rigs. Also, my elastics, I'm using uh, Maver 12 latex on all my elastics. It's a really soft latex. I've always used latex. You know, it's personal preference, but I find it works really well for small, large, all, size, all sizes of fish, you know, skimmers and carp. It's really soft, it's really forgiving, which means, especially when you're shallow fishing, the fish are moving out your peg nice and calmly they're not being spooked because all of a sudden they're being hooked with this power elastic that's very important you don't want to spook any any more fish that are in your peg you want to keep them in your peg feeding happily so that's the rigs now the depths as i've said to you especially when you're shallow fishing this all comes back to why we've washed the meat off i've washed my meat off a particular way so i can kind of like count the four now, when you actually cut six mil meat up, what you find is it falls quite slowly to the extent where that is 18 inches deep. And once you've washed six mil cubes off, a six mil cube will take seven and a half seconds to fall that depth. And most people think, find that hard to believe, but that is the actual speed of the bait. So in that way, you can actually count where your bait is in your swim. And so if I've, let's say, let's say for example, I've fed my bait in a deeper rig, let's say this one. So that's gonna take 10 seconds to fall and I've not had a bite after 10 seconds, I know that the fish are deeper. And so when you're on fishing, you're catching on a regular basis and you're catching on this rig and all of a sudden it goes quiet and you're counting the fall of your bait, you pick your deeper rig up and you get a bite straight away. So it keeps you in touch with where the fish are in your peg. That's how important washing your bait off is to ensure that it's all falling at the same rate and at a certain time as well. As well as that, by washing your bait off, we're on a venue here where we've got a lot of wildlife. Just by washing your bait off means you're not getting any wildlife into your peg, which is gonna spook any fish that are feeding shallow. So that's the rigs. Time to get some fish caught, I think. Right, we're on about feeding now. So as you can see, I'm nice and comfortable, I'm able which is quite important to hold my pole and feed at the same time. This is really important with meat fishing. Meat fishing, getting the best out of it, revolves around either feeding with your hand on your short line at five meters. That's why your five meter line is one of the most consistent ways of catching on commercials with the meat. You can feed it by hand or by a catapult. So today we're at 13 meters. I've caught a few fish on the deck and now I'm having to catch them shallow. In order to keep them fish interested shallow, I've got to feed on a regular basis so i'm lifting my rig i'm lowering my rig in i'm feeding at the same time i've always got that catapult in my hand yet at the same time if i get a bite i can connect with it straight away i'm in touch with my fishing all the time so always make sure you're nice and comfortable but when it comes to your feeding you've got to keep that bait going in because if you don't keep that bait going in, what reason have they got to come underneath your pole tip? What you're trying to do is you are trying to make competition, feeding fish competitive, and that won't happen if you don't feed. So generally, when I'm fishing shallow, I want to be feeding at least every 
15 seconds. And if I'm catching a lot of fish, I might slow that down. But if I'm not catching a lot of fish, I'll actually speed that up because I want the fish to come underneath my pole tip. So that's generally how I'm gonna be feeding. As you can see, that's the amount I'm feeding. Virtually half a pouch. And what you've got to remember is, none of it gets to the bottom. And this is why you've got to feed quite aggressively because it falls so slow through the water. So there's a very, very small percentage of this bait that will actually get to the bottom. Yep. Right, we've got a fish on now. Just steadily feeding, you know, 25, 30 pieces of meat on a regular basis. I'm actually today catching more fish on my deeper rig, on my deeper shallow rig. So I'm glad I've put it up because on my, as I said earlier on, on my middle and my shallow rigs, just doesn't seem to be working the same. Whereas with my, let's say two and three quarter depth rig, uh, it seems to be working really well. They're only small carp, but I'm catching quite a few. Here we are, another one. Hello, little beauty, little common. Look at that one, little scrapper. Take the hook out, you can join your buddies. Lovely fish. In we go. Yeah. Right, <laughs> top tip. Something I do on all my elastics, especially with carp fishing, I put a double bead. And it's very important this, and it's very useful as well. It allows you to change the tension of your elastic. So, by just putting it there, by just pulling it down, it's tensioning my elastic up. However, I'm bumping fish, then I want to bring my bead straight down like that. So it allows you just instantly to adjust the tension of your elastic. What you'll find is when you're fishing, sometimes you catch a lot of fish, your elastic stretches under pressure and you have a bit hanging out. So rather than wasting time in match conditions, cutting your elastic down by having that bead on allows you to do it in seconds. The other thing as well, if you're snag fishing, if you're snag fishing and you're hitting a lot of fish that are running to snags, it allows you to not cut your elastic down and just use the bead. So if I'm in a situation where I'm going to hook a fish in a snag and I want to get it out, I'll pull the bead down to like that. So the tension of my elastic is maximum. So if I've cut it down, I can pull the fish away from the reeds and then the fish will naturally pull the elastic back through that bead back to a soft elastic to play your fish in front of you in the open water. Hope it works for you. Hello, here we go. What we got here? It's Billy. We've got a bream. Nice skimmer amongst the small carp. This is a great way to end the session, I think. So, if you want to read more about my tips on catching skimmers and carp on commercials with what I'd regard as one of the most consistent baits for catching fish in the summertime, then read more in next month's Match Fishing magazine. Look at that. Happy days. And until then, see you later and tight lines.